I was poking my nose around on YouTube a little bit and I saw that Bay Area Bugs is doing some videos with some off-roading big SUV things. And that got me thinking, it's been a while since I've done something with a truck and because I live in Australia, they don't really exist here, so I tend to forget that they're incredibly popular over in the States. And having a look at this thing really made me think, you know what? I might want to do a gooseneck because when I did the motorhome one, for some reason, and I do not know why, this thing was very popular. So not only should I make a gooseneck, but I should probably make it to be able to do one of these sorts of vehicles to move along. So the first thing I did is because I don't really know much about goosenecks, because goosenecks here in Australia just don't really exist. I think I have seen one in my entire life. They just not, because they go on like big American trucks. They don't exist here. So I had a look and it just looks like a normal fifth wheel attachment. And that led me to find this fifth wheel attachment. Uh, but you know, this one doesn't look quite so stable. That's when I looked up if there was a gooseneck specifically and not a fifth wheel attachment. This one doesn't quite look right because it has a ball hitch. But that doesn't really match what we're looking at here, does it? Because that is clearly a peg. There are different variants. I have looked around a little bit and if I can find any of them. Yeah, here's a slightly different one. You know what? Ah. I think that does go onto a ball hitch. Interesting. Not sure about how I would mechanically operate this. Oh, you know what? Maybe that's to like lift it up of its pegs, maybe? To get that little bit of height after it's uh, been hitched up. Ooh, interesting. And because it's got an overhang, I can also use that. So yeah, okay. We're gonna grab this guy's mod. Gooseneck toe hitch. Okay, so it's just a very simple little thing. And does this line up? I feel that... Not really. So maybe we'll have to remove the rear tailgate for that to uh, hitch up. And then the rest of it should be pretty darn good. Okay, let's start by ripping this. Locate in asset browser, show in explorer, comes up with this little bad boy. And Johnson camper trailer one drag you in and just to get the ball rolling we'll also grab wherever there is a material thing in here something there we go materials the next job is to get all of the materials and find them and delete everything else uh, it's not as if there's a small amount of materials in here then the platform going to work upon is probably going to be maybe not this probably more like a, just a normal sort of standard trailer like it's just this probably then we'll drag grab grab most of this and then for the flex body there's a lot of things in here goodness gracious speaking of the flex bodies though we're gonna have to divide this up a smidge. And since we're doing this overhang this time, not the other overhang, or maybe I suppose I could just copy and paste it over so there, so that could work. And now it looks like we got two awnings for the price of one. And then we also got these little pods here on the side, which we're gonna make uh, retractable as well. For the first part, we're gonna grab the main body and I'm just gonna clear out all of the flex bodies. We don't need all of them right now and paste that in there and this is gonna be ugh. you know what we don't need rear frame this is gonna be just the oh maybe we do need the rear frame damn it all right let's undo the deletion and what do we have here we have the rear guard floor floor wall front roof goodness gracious so let's just grab a bunch of these and we're gonna start plopping things together. I think actually the tail lights can stay and we might grab them from somewhere else. So we'll leave those for now. Reload the lure so the new mod will be available. And let's see if our beautiful trailer is anywhere to be found. No, not by the looks of it. I spelt it Hevicles. God damn it, my dyslexia. And then hey, went with a V trailer. Let's see how this thing goes. Yeah, um, there's some problems. Let's start by rotating everything 180 degrees. This has no adjustment on the position either. So why is it so far off? What the hell? I suppose really my only option right now is just to move everything in the J in the 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 blend file backwards and re-export. 
then BMNG shows it getting pretty darn close. Let's try the next thing. Export this as an OBJ. Well, actually, you know what? We only need this one. And we're going to use the jankness that is Nodebeam Editor. Hurrah! Every time I use this program, though, it gives me a massive headache. That's weird. I wonder. No, there's no offset. Hmm. Is everything just positive on the node values then? 14, 12, 6, 12, 14, 1, 15. Okay, yeah, just every node is behind the midpoint. Oh, that explains why the flex body wanted to be way up here because this is actually where the midpoint for the body is. There's a possibility that going with a semi trailer was not our best choice today, but there we have it. Mostly lined up. We can then scale this down a little bit, a little bit more, then move it down on its own. Because most of the weight for this is going to be really low anyway. I'm not too concerned about this, just getting it all working nice. Then select the top parts and I'll bring you down. And then with a quick little refresh, that should all be lined up. It's close enough. I think next up is to change the suspension around a little bit. And after some research, the smallest wheels we could get on here were just too big. I mean, it's hard to imagine why they're so small. So that led me to the Piccolina, which also had not very small wheels, really. <sighs> Which led to that. So we've, we've got to pause a little bit right now, but you can see that the wheels are about the same size, which is crazy. These are 10 inch wheels. Why are they so small? Uh, whatever. Then as for the tires, I don't like my chances. Then wait, where is our suspension? Oh dear, uh, where, where, where is our suspension? We got bow, oh, it's under a custom, we're gonna have to make a custom bogey. Damn it, trailers, bogey, sweet. And this bogey is gonna have to change to sport RV. And that's gonna change there and there. Then back to doing the wheels. Let's go wheel R and put that there. And oh dear, it is not having a good time right now. Where is this? The suspension is in there, but where? Uh, our tires. Tires would probably be around here somewhere, right? Widgeon wheel 01 V Y node not found. Wait, is it wheel data that we need? In our suspension section, we're just gonna plop you right at the end and get rid of the power drain. We don't need that. Now, with a little refresh, we should have more, more luck, not 100% luck. I have been working so hard to fix this tire explosion issue. It's been quite a while and I've gotten closer, but it's not really working. This is not what a tire should look like in Beam NG. In fact, actually, if we get rid of beams, it's completely invisible. But on a normal car without any beams, you can see that it's got this pressure wheel on the outside. For me, it's not showing up and it's only creating the rim side of it, but it has the tire there. So if we bring back the beam, uh, it, there's no tire, but the tire is showing up. So. Uh, time to put that recording on pause again and come back in another five hours with probably no actual progression into this mod. Five hours later. Mm, that's it. I give up. We're going to get rid of all of the wheel stuff that I done. So mini wheels are gone. Delete that. Get rid of this apparently terrible wheel data. Then we're going to grab buggy suspension and change this to... Sport, sport RV suspension. Don't need airbag, don't need leaf, wheel data. We are going to keep good. Then next we're going to need their wheels and tires. Then finally, uh, flex bodies. That's got to change. Now these do have an X offset and the Y offset. Okay, so this is all good. So delete you, grab you, put you X zero, call you sport underscore RV wheels. Then I think if we go in here and select just the 
higher, then parent that out with the selection. This will be called tires. And now, don't think we need the inner. Let's just keep the outer. Don't need that line in there. Then this gets replaced with the wheel. And one of these will be flipped around. Save this. And at the very least, the real wheel should be the right mesh. Let's see if we're getting any luck with this. Something's kind of working. It's black. It shouldn't be black. Oh, you know what? They probably have their own material. Oh God, there's a lot of materials in here. Wait, object, clean up, remove unused. There we go. And then for you as well, clean up, remove unused material slots. Perfect. Does that material exist? No, it does not. Let's try finding it here. And no, that means that this must be some sort of common material. Ugh, whatever. Let's get to doing the tires. So it turns out the reason why the rear tire was not showing up is because I also needed to put on the front tire and the front tire meant that the rear tire could then show up. What? I don't get it. Let's up you to 15. And would you look at that? It's ooh, actually pretty close. Now to do the outside one. If 30 was about there, I think we should go with 30. So looking at the front tires radius, we'll make that point three. And back in beam and G, ooh, you know, it's pretty darn close. So wheel width, let's halve it. And yep, okay, everything is controlled by the front wheels. That's how that works, yep. Now let's bring these down a bit. And there's our custom tires, though they are a bit offset. In here we would have to use, oh, there is no node offset, weird. Well, let's grab this and let's see that's probably too much let's go 0.5 and oh wow yeah that's actually pretty darn good now we got to do is like i think i'm going to duplicate the front more frontward wheels so then i can have one here and then i'll have the duplicate here that will require me to duplicate these and give them an extra F and these are the front wheel nodes. We can find them here, left and right. Let's duplicate these. And in this, we'll replace this, replace this with just a little bit of a sneaky F put in there. That'll make it easier to work on in the future. Now we duplicate our wheels and put that extra little F in there. And we're going to do that to basically everything we've done so far. Then for the wheels, if we have buggy position, wait, I think this is meant to be dollar sign equals a value of, let's say, point no, zero point, let's say three for 30 centimeters to go further back plus that. I think that gives us the math equation. Refresh in beam NG, we might, okay. No, hasn't worked. Um, our new things are not showing up. I have front spindles, but also front of spindles. What? As you can see here, the wheel dart. Oh, you know what? I've put a capital F in there. So it's got to be lowercase because that's what I changed it to. Then, okay, good. If we refresh, is that going to put it in by default? Ye close. Front of wheels will also get front of tires. Perfect. Um, they just got a little bit of adjusting. As for everything else, okay, well, the rear tires are not adjusted, right? But that's pretty easy to do. We've got the node offset already. Plop it in there. Then you can have, I think that's okay. Just add that in and it should just good. Okay. I don't know why we're getting crunch exam, but let's uh, see. Does this roll at the moment? It does! Okay, well, the brakes are no good at the moment, but we'll figure that out. We're also, like, colliding with the ground. Is the suspension hitting the ground? It might be. Ugh. But now we can get rid of the front brakes. They don't matter. And then this is going to get added a little bit more. So hopefully it'll move just right in line. Nope. Oh, dear. That's unhappy. Doesn't matter. Let's make you even bigger. Eh, close. And now we have... Our suspension in place. I mean, is, is it perfect? It, it, no, but it's all working and the tires are not popping. We're having a little bit of a collision issue though. Just wish I knew exactly where it's from. I think it's from like when I try to move the rear tires more forwards. It seems to have a, a little bit of an issue, but 
It doesn't look like it's colliding with anything, so I don't know why it's having such a problem. Well, let's try to maybe widen out a smidge. This is currently 0.6, let's change that to 0.7. Then this node should move outwards a little bit, good. And hey, presto, no more hassle. Except this wheel has widened out a bit. You know what's fine. As long as our suspension is all acting good and uh, the bodywork is not clipping through the side. Oh yeah, now I'm gonna do that. So the first thing we're going to do is create a thing for these. Uh, actually, you know what? The very first thing we're going to do is get this to be as low as these are. So then they're all fairly even. So what is the lowest point there? That is basically on zero. So there we go. Now they've all extended the same amount. We'll grab the names of these and we'll create a new ground roads yeah, thing. Blah, 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 blah. Me do brains work. Basically what we're going to do now is if this, there we go. Uh, stops having a bit of a heart attack. We're going to put in a couple of nodes. Uh, it would be three nodes each side. I would have an uncapped rail there as well, and that node will go down and push the vehicle up with that node that will collide with the ground. Let's start by grabbing from the Johnson Valley camper van. Let me make it a little bit easier. We'll grab those two, pull up them in here. Then we're also going to grab input actions. Then we're going to go into the side pod. Oh, you know what? Actually, we could just grab the side pods by default because the side pods yeah we're gonna be using a very similar setup we're also only keeping two side pods and all i've put all of the side pods all in one go and there is a lot of nodes to be had here as well jesus bring the side pods in bring in the obj and now we can do a little bit of editing which side do these want to be on? If we're looking at the front side, it's to the right. And that means that it's these two we want to move. And the other ones we can go ahead and delete. So can we just select those and press delete? D delete? Hey! Then you do, daddies. Get to move backwards. And oh boy, there's uh, quite a bit of change in here. I don't think there is any more right pod left. So we get rid of right. Now we duplicate, create a new one of the slots in the main body. And this is going to be side pods. Now if we hit control R, that should just pop in. Nope, side, the side pods are there. Ah, uh, you know what? The side pods are there, but one, they're not connected. Well, not completely, apparently those are. But two, they don't have our pod names. And I've just realized that I've given all of the pods on the left side the same name, but you know what, that's fine. But I think we've got a way to sort this out. So we've got seven, nine, 10, and 12 are the only things here. So we're gonna grab all seven and nine and put those there. Then everything that's 10 and 12 can all go in line over here. And now we have separated pods. Easy. Now when we refresh, we get to see them fall all on their own. You know, I actually did a pretty good job of lining those up. I, I mean, I know they're not actually lined up, but you know, they're pretty darn close and nobody's gonna be paying me that much attention. Hopefully. Next is this is not properly connecting to the chassis. God, there's a lot of missing lines. Let's clean this up a little bit. Reopen our side pods. Then let's go in and open the main J beam section. And now we're going to create a whole bunch of beams connecting the nodes. And there's a slight possibility that after a quick little refresh that this might work. Oh, would you look at that? And then page up. It goes the wrong way. Perfect. That's exactly what we were expecting. And page. Okay. What am I doing wrong again? How do I, how do I even? Ah, it turns out that I was pulling and pushing on the wrong nodes, but now everything's a good end, except that, you know, it's, it's super slow. Come on. Anyway, next is these little rolly doohickeys. I should be able to figure this one out easily, considering I've already done this in the past. I think what I need is 
four nodes. Actually, if I think about this, I don't really need a slide node, do I? I just need two nodes to anchor to come out for the awning and then four nodes to be the like push and the pull. So I could do away with the slide nodes and rails for this one. That would make my life a lot easier. So let's go to our front on view and we're gonna create, oh, you know what? We should save this first. Just call it an untitled button. That way I can go ahead, shift A, create a plane. There we go. Then move you up into place. It'd be about there somewhere. You would go about there somewhere. And you would go about there. Now we have our new J-beam export. And we, all we need to do is really grab the nodes and beams in triangle section. And then put that in. Oh, you know what? I haven't actually created a new awnings thing. You know what? Fine. Whatever. Rear... Awning. I was thinking of the hydraulic ramps, but you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. Create a new one of these. Call it the awnings rear. And then awnings rear. Oh, you know what? Hold on. Rear awnings. We will be duplicating this in a bit. But for now, what we want to do is create some... We are going to create some connections to the body, but we'll do that in a bit. First, what we want to do is, uh, oh god, there's a lot to do here. We're gonna grab hydros. Is there anything else we need to grab from here? I think we need to grab some, yeah, some event stuff. Frick. But we're basically gonna start just piling things in. And eventually, you'll be able to not only just move your pods slowly in and out, but also move your, your, your awning. Okay, that's a problem. Huh. So that's going to come down to our hydros here. We have a in and an out limit, but our rate. So between, oh, what? That is way too far. So let's go to like 0 0.01. Save that. And then if we go do a quick little refresh, it's... Still moving like way too fast. What the hell? Why? Whoa, okay. Yeah, so it turns out uh, this is usually set to like zero there for the maximum so it can't extend anymore this is just how i have it set up then it can retract but it cannot extend but now if we hold that it will retract nice and slowly but you know not downwards enough for now anymore maybe make this 0.5 and inwards okay well it does it seems to only go to the same length and won't go to any different length the hell why is it the input factor let's put you back to one and hey it does go down a lot more a lot more that's a problem let's change you to 0 0.6 then when retracting damn it, it still retracts way too much what the hell eh. well i fixed it with just like lots and lots of finagling but i also moved the uh, more forward nodes more forward and put in front awning as well so that way i don't have to do this again and word you look oh hold on no going the wrong way this time it does both of them and then they go back and hey presto they're now a quasi locked in place now if you pay a lot of attention you notice that the materials will be stressing and squishing uh, squ uh, squishing but most people hopefully won't be noticing that and with that really the last two things we need to do is one these rams and two this gooseneck which actually i think i can do in two in one here i can make the rams go down and the gooseneck go no rams go up and gooseneck go down in the same action because they're both linked anyway so let's go in do this again shift a mesh plane get those lined up then we're going to have the one that'll be here basically and then this is going to push and pull directly upwards but then again this is also tricky uh how do i do this this is going to take a little bit of brain power. I think what we'll do is uh, have an uncapped slide note. So these will be the rails. Then this will move up and down. But I'm going to need more than one of these. So if we go 
E again, then these will also have nodes over here, which then when these go up and down, they'll pivot this, but this is also connected to this. I think actually this needs another one, so then it can be hooked up to this. Then export this, but this one we're not gonna care too much about because we already have like a, oh, you know what? I did have a, yeah, you know what? We could just copy you and we can blob you in about here. All we'll have to do is copy ground ramps. Open up another slot for us. Send feet, sounds about right. Then here we go, ground rams. Great. I've got to attach it to the body. And with a bunch more connectors added in, it should hold in place maybe. Oh, fancy. Wonder if I got it working already. Oh yeah, okay. It looks like the legs are retracting, but incredibly slowly like very slow. wait is that can moving that let's go trailer legs and say goodbye to that now that we uh don't necessarily need that no more and yeah that's uh not doing quite what i was asking it to do why have they tilted over what that what the hell oh wait could have sworn i made all the slide notes what the hell i think i accidentally over saved some things and didn't save correctly frick but with that now all sorted, it still has issues. Why? I'm an idiot. I had this set to true for capped and that was meant to be set to false. So that means that it goes beyond the slide and it basically works as uh, an extender outwards. So now we've got it in here and I'm not sure why the feet are not in line. So we've got th 14, 13, but 12 should be in line. That's a bit weird and then, oh, Stupid camera stuff. Uh, that's bobbing up and down. That's weird. This one's also... Why are they loose? That's strange. But I wonder if it'll extend. Okay, well... That's an interesting thing that's happening. And away the... Oh, hello. Yep. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make these bottom nodes non-collidable and make 16 be the one that moves. I hope this works. And eventually we end up there. There's a lot more work to it than that. But if we have a look here, it will go all the way in and it will go all the way out and it will hold the trailer up. Then diddly -tastic. Now to do it to this little part. I'm going to have to make another rail. And with that, we have the piece de resistance. If we have a look here, when it now extends, you'll see that this moves up, which is just fantastic. Now, it's not perfect. I'm going to be straight out there. I couldn't figure out a way to do that without having like a whole slew of extra nodes. But let's also retract these awnings and bring those in. Then let's also get this ready by putting the side pods in. Well, let's grab ourselves a big hefty duty dually, chuck on that good old gooseneck and realize that I haven't actually added ah, a, uh, a coupler to this. Here we luckily have a coupler, bit of code, a refresh, reset the legs, then let's hit L for couplers. That's the wrong coupler. And no, oh, that's a different sort of coupler, isn't it? Oh, it's called Gooseneck. Okay, they've created their own custom one. Refresh and then by default, the legs are down. I might see about changing that at some point. Then I think we might also take the tailgate off, turn on the couplers, and then let's see if this works. Please, God, work. I've worked all day for you and it's getting dark outside. Uh, how do we do this? I'm thinking first we'll get it just like slightly lined up, even closely. Then go to the other vehicle and then retract those legs and it will couple. It will couple. It'll couple. Why won't you couple? Well, it's the next day and... You know what? I actually figured it out. And I don't know why. It turns out that it didn't want coupler tag, but instead just tag. That was the only problem. Why? 
I, I could not even begin to tell you why there's tag and coupler tag. But now we can go ahead and uh, we, we do have the ability to lengthen and drop the feet. Uh, uh, do we? Hold on. Yep, there we go. And also bring in our awning. So then this thing is nice and packed away and ready to go out camping. And then we bring in the side pods. I would love to add sounds to this, but I honestly, I don't know how or if it's possible. I couldn't tell you. But then we have our vehicle and hey, Presto, would you look at that? I mean, the brakes are not great and I'm not actually sure if the brakes are working, but it seems to be working. Got ourselves a big jewelry in the back there. Oh, this thing is absolutely fantastic. I love this. I love this. I am not much of a camping person. I mean, honestly, have you seen me before? But this, <laughs> this is fun. I'd love to do an interior, but if we go in, I haven't got one. This is up for you to fill out because I mean, you really, you should make camper vans uh, like picking the right one for yourself. So I'm going to leave this open partly because I'm not particularly great at 3D modeling and also uh, I, I'm fine with, oh, I have to move the number plate. Whoops. And off we go again. Let's find a camping spot. Wow, the, <laughs> the traction control is going off. That's hilarious. Well, uh, that didn't quite go the way I was going uh, for hoping for a camping sort of thing, but this is where we were going anyway. For now though, I would like to thank my channel members. You guys are awesome. For everybody else, uh, wait, you know what, I, hold I forgot the Rogue Tick the Crayon Priest. Bro, you rock for being a top tier channel member. For the rest of you though, I'll catch you all next time. Goodbye.